thanks for coming. <coughs> my name's Nick. I am a traditional sign painter from Bridgend, although most of my work is based in Cardiff. Um, I'm going to be chatting to you briefly about my working life, uh, sign painting as a craft, um, and this presentation will also uh, tell you how a forgotten craft has come back into fashion. Yay. <laughs> I'll break the presentation into three sections. Um, firstly, I'd like to share my journey, uh, how I started, um, why I'm so passionate about my art form, um, and also show you a few basic lettering techniques. Um, I'd like to talk about the craft, uh, showing the daily ins and outs of creating a sign for a live client as well. And finally, uh, why the art of sign writing is growing daily. Um, it should matter to customers. Um, it does show a lot, of, a lot more love and attention. Now, while studying at Newport Uni, uh, I found that I was jumping from job to job. Um, Dead-end bar jobs, sales roles, um, and numerous retail jobs. I knew that my ambition was to do something creative, um, and I specialised in lettering whilst at Newport. Um, one day, whilst working behind the bar in my local pub, uh, my manager asked uh, if I'd do the weekly chalkboards, seeing as though I did art and stuff. Uh, after spending a few minutes uh, with a chalkboard pen outside in the rain, um, an old man stood behind me and asked if I was the local sign writer. Um, after my shift, I thought I was the luckiest guy on, on the planet. I just spent the last two hours bunking off pulling pints and uh, doodling on a chalkboard with a chalkboard pen. So over the next few days I researched what a sign writer was and I very quickly became obsessed with the art form. After a few more chalkboards at the same pub I had quite a few photographs to put in a portfolio to show other customers. So on my days off I would travel around local pubs and restaurants asking if they wanted any chalkboards doing. And within a few weeks, I was flooded with commissions. I did a lot of work for no money, um, just to get a, a bit more of a portfolio, and more importantly, to practice. As you can see there, most of that is done with a chalkboard pen, um, which I hate now. But <laughs> at the time, that's all I knew. Um, I also spent a lot of time trawling the internet old books, going to charity shops, finding antique um, packaging books and lettering books, and I was hooked. So the more I researched, the more I found little tricks of the trade. I had a group of traditional sign writers that I followed closely on Instagram and Facebook, and I realized that it was more than just writing on chalkboards with a scratchy pen. <laughs> I learned that even though I'd been using chalk and chalkboard pens to shade and letter. Everyone who I'd researched was using this funny stick and a long-haired brush. <laughs> Above are a few of my heroes. I've met all of them and have worked closely alongside a good few of them. I'll elaborate on this a little later. Now the amount of time and effort that these sign writers were putting into each piece of art definitely showed their love for the craft. Uh, it truly made me appreciate it more. I had never seen anything like it. The techniques, steadiness of the hand when they were painting, and especially the tools that they used. All of my t free time was devoted to it. This creativity is exactly what I've been searching for. So within a few weeks, I bought a few basics which is still in my kit box five years later. <coughs> a few paintbrushes, a small palette, and some white spirit to thin down the paint. It's all I could afford at the time. <laughs> I'll take the next few minutes to take you on a little short tour of my kit box. So although it looks as if it's been through the wars, and that it's been with me from the start of my journey, I'm obsessed with these little things. And this is probably kit box number 10. <laughs> Inside are a few compartments, 
and each holds a little treasure. It's an organized chaos, but I know where every single item is. I've got a little, a little drawer full of gold leaf. I use 23 and a half carat gold. It's the purest form you can get in leaf. Uh, it's used for sign work uh, because it's a uh, non-reactive nature. Um, it provides an extreme protection on the, on the coating that you're gold leafing. Uh, it never fades and it used to be beaten to uh, four to five millionths of an inch by hand. Uh, nowadays it's beaten by a machine just to keep consistency and quality control. Alongside it is a little badger hair brush. I'm vegan but I can't really do much about that. <laughs> um, so I use this to pick up the gold and pop it onto the surface. Um, now most people believe that you rub it on your hair because of the static, but it's actually the oils in the hair and the, and the skin. So mostly I rub it on my dirty beard. <laughs> These are my brushes. Um, these brushes are made from natural hairs um, and have a very unique movement when used properly. Um, they're all handmade. Um, they're usually long haired and come in all different shapes and sizes. It's a bit dirty. Um, they come in either natural, natural hairs or um, if you want to lie to people, I use all synthetic brushes. Uh, I clean my brushes with a little bit of white spirit um, and then after the white spirit dip it in a bit of turps just to make sure that all the paint is gone and I le leave them in a little bit of uh, neat's foot oil so the neat's foot oil is a natural oil that comes from a horse's hoof um, another yeah um, yeah secreted naturally from a horse's hoof and it just makes sure that all the, all the paint is drawn from the inside of the paintbrush, it doesn't dry up. I wish I'd known that at the start, because I've gone through thousands of brushes. This is my mall stick. Anyone know what that is? Lots of people know? Yeah. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, so I, so I use this to, um, to paint with, and it allows me to have my hand off the surface when I'm painting um, so I don't rub my hand through all the paint I've just, just painted. Um, I can draw straight lines with it with the paintbrush and I can also do like perfect circles. Did you make that yourself? Or do you yeah, buy that this is yourself? about 150 years old now. What? This has been changed about 30 times. It's a joke. <laughs> so the paint I use is called One Shot. The paint I use is called One Shot and it's extremely hard wearing. It's an enamel paint um, and it's a very high gloss paint. It's the benchmark for all sign writers. Um, it's used for car pinstriping, lettering, window painting, um, underwater, and a lot of antique restoration work, not in aqua. Um, it's been used throughout the world since about 1948, um, and I don't use anything else. I've got, a few, I've got a few cans of one shot from the 50s that have still got lead, lead in them. You might need to be louder. Yeah. Um, throughout my time collecting various tools, um, and through a lot of trial and error, I've ended up with this kit box. It's all I need to create a sign, and it's my, my only money maker. Uh, it allows me to pay my mortgage, and it puts food on my table. Cared for well, it'll, it should last me the rest of my life, until I buy my next one. <laughs> um, it's something that I never thought would earn me any money, let alone talk to people about what it is. So my process. Above is an example of what a reverse gilded glass sign looks like. This job was actually my first, my first ever gilded window, uh, but it's still my favorite to date. 
It took me about four days to complete in total because um, I had no experience doing it, reading books, following certain sign writers. And I went on a day workshop with a sign writer called Jack Hollands in London, who gave me a few basic techniques and something that should have taken me a day took me four. Um, so to create the pattern, as you can see on the left for it, uh, I do something uh, called pouncing. Um, so I sketch everything out firstly with pencil, or very loosely in Photoshop or Illustrator. Um, I'll blow it up so it's the correct size, measuring the window first, and then from the pencil sketch I can blow it up to the right size, um, and then follow the lines while it, when it's when it's sketched out with a, a little pounce wheel, which has got um, lots of little sharp edges to perforate holes. Um, so after the holes have been created with the pounce wheel, um, it's quite a time consuming process, uh, blisters and blood, sweat and tears. Um, I'm left with a pattern that looks a little bit like this. Um, so that's the penned out design. And then on the back, you can probably see if you look later that every single line has been perforated. And then sanded on the back so that all the little all the little bits of paper are flat. And after that I get some sign writers uh, whiting or chalk powder, press it through and it leaves hundreds of little dots to show me where exactly I need to paint. So I've already marked out where the horizontal and vertical lines lie um, and after lining them up I can secure the um, design to the window, pounce it, take the design off and I'm left with a perfect design. <coughs> Uh, the next clip is a quick example of how I'd get a design from Photoshop onto a finished glass panel. So this first image shows a design that I finalised in Photoshop with a client. Um, I printed out the black outlines in reverse with the horizontal and vertical lines. The design is then fixed to the front um, and after two layers of 23.5 karat gold leaf is cured and burnished. I can then paint the black outlines and it leaves this mirror image from the exterior. So this is a basic drop shadow and a, a finger blended inner and I decided to uh, crush up a lot of metal leaf and push it into the, uh, the gap. Um, so everything's flooded with colour after I'm happy with everything and that's the outcome. So. So in total, including the design work, the prep, outlines, drying time, a few coats of gold leaf, the drop shadows, the metal and the background colour, um, <coughs> this tiny little sign took me about, about 26 hours over three days. This is a little short video. I'll let it run in the background. Um, so obviously I've shown an example um, of the process to a few this morning painting on the board. Um, but for those of you who didn't see it, uh, here's a close-up of a, li a little bit of technique. Um, so firstly, I've marked out a freehand design with a, with a wax pencil. The pencil can be used on any surface. Windows normally, but you can also use it underwater or in the Welsh weather. <laughs> um, the one shot paint here has to be thinned with a little bit of turps or white spirit in order to get the right flow and consistency. There is no exact science to this process, it's just a feeling that comes with years of practice. Well, I can just tell by the way the paintbrush moves whether it's too thick or too thin. Um, if you mix it too thin, then it just runs down the glass. But if you mix it too thick, it goes really gloopy and dries really lumpy and start again. Why do all the glass to start again? Yeah. You just spray it Yeah. It's not a, not a huge deal. So also, if the glass panel hasn't been uh, thoroughly chemically cleaned, um, you've got to clean the glass six or seven times. 
Um, the paint will also separate on the surface like oil. Um, it just reacts with waxes and um, like the spray that they spray glass with when it's new. It's just always better to paint on Victorian glass rather than a new glass. So as I'm pressing down, um, it creates a thick stroke. Uh, these should always be done on the downstroke. And as I lift the paintbrush up and flick to the right, it goes thinner. Um, so as you can see from the video, I'm ending each stroke with a flick of the brush. And that's to create a sharp corner. It's, uh, this technique is used for both script and block capitals as well. Each sign writer has their own a version of a hand-painted script. Um, this is mine online at the moment. It'll probably change throughout the years. This one? Yeah. So I've developed my script over the past five years. And it's really funny how you can see another sign writer's work when you go to pubs, clubs, you know whose it is. Oh. It's often the first point of discussion when I'm out with my wife. <laughs> she, <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> The pink letter in here is called a sign writer's casual, um, and al although it looks sloppy, it also <laughs> takes years to perfect. Um, this is a little breakdown of some of the brush strokes which make up a, uh, a basic block font, and this is created by the legendary American sign writer Mike Meyer. I've included his Instagram if you want to go and take a look. Um, so that's a little bit about myself. Um, how I got started and a little intro into a few of the techniques. So I've travelled throughout the UK to learn from and work alongside other artists. Um, it's a really welcoming community to be part of. Um, even the big players within the industry will always be on the other end of the phone to give you techniques, tips when you're out on a job. Um, 20, 30 sign writers within London will always be there to help or bring you a coffee or help you out. <laughs> um, one thing that I love about the job is that there's no competition. If a sign writer sees another sign writer working, there's no envy or turf wars. Um, there's always an appreciation for their artwork. Um, an example of a recent collaboration is when I travelled to Piccadilly to work with the fab Mia Warner. Um, she commissioned me to help her paint these massive hoarding boards around um, a brand new building next to Fort Nama Mason. And that's four, about four days work that is. There's about six of those boards around the place. Um, this is another recent commission. Um, these are 8 by 4 foot fairground uh, panels. There was uh, 25 of them in total and they went round uh, a large waltzer for, um, for a client in America. Um, these were airbrushed by um, a world renowned airbrush artist in Port Cole called Chris Gadd. Uh, my job was just to paint in all the signatures on each board. And this last example, ex example, <laughs> example shows a couple of hand-painted logos for Jude's ice cream. Um, myself and Bruce Crows, another sign writer from Bristol, travelled to the, uh, the countryside of Winchester, and we spent the day branding their vintage vans <coughs> and trailers with their logos and lettering. It was the hottest day of the year, and they must have given us about 100 ice creams each. <laughs> Now for those of you who actually love painting, watercolours, oils, acrylics, spray painting, whatever it may be, I can imagine that you get exactly the same effect that I do. Um, it really relaxes me and it's almost therapeutic. I forget anything that clutters my mind when I paint and I'm really fortunate enough to actually make a living from it. Um, I often find myself in my own little zone. I've got a little workshop in my garden and I spend most nights out there. I've got a little bunk bed in there. It's when I get to test new techniques, um, new fonts, uh, new colourways, um, and traditional ways of making letters. 
so I completed my graphic design degree, um, and although I class myself as a tr traditionalist now, I still get to use my graphic design background to set out layouts. Um, it's also helped me with spacing when I'm trying to space a sign in my head, um, when I match colours and when I need to add a contrast in font. Um, I kind of know what works well together without having to uh, type a font out. Um, I don't necessarily trust computers anymore, <laughs> as we've seen this morning. Yeah. If something looks right, 99% um, of the time it is right. Um, there's an old saying that if something looks straight, it is. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm not laughing. <laughs> you're stressing. You see, so you were nice to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone. It's, this is your curse. Gonna have to use this one. So one of my favourite things about the job is the diversity and flexibility that it gives me. Um, so when, on the Monday, I could be on top of a 50-foot cherry picker at the side of a pub, doing a pub gable, and on the Tuesday I could be hanging a swing sign. Um, I've had to get a ladder licence, cherry picker licence, <laughs> all the health and safeties, coffee over a laptop licence. <laughs> <laughs> And for the next nine days, I could be sticking 35,000 crystals to a wall. Oh, God. Uh, how many days was that? Nine. <coughs> just, the, just the sticking part? Yeah. Not the painting? No, the painting was... Um, so this is 24 karat gold leaf, 23 and a half karat gold leaf on the top. And it's platinum leaf on the bottom. And it wasn't blingy enough. It wasn't, <laughs> wasn't quite expensive enough. <laughs> For the... For, um, I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, we decided to buy some glass crystals. Um, I don't even want to look at it anymore. <laughs> so every job that I do is my favourite at that point in time. There will always be a need for advertising well-designed fonts, shopfront signage, and just various hand-painted messaging. Um, the craft is definitely on the up, with lettering workshops and sign writing workshops fully booked throughout the world all the time. <coughs> James. <laughs> People who are not in the loop will say that sign writing is a dying art, where this is simply not true. Um, when I was asked to pre present this talk, one question that popped up was why would somebody choose hand-painted sign over a vinyl sign? And for me, there's no comparison. The process from start to finish is a very lengthy one. It takes a lot of skill and it's, uh, it's definitely a traditional craft. It shows that someone has thought about the whole process from initial concept all the way to the installation of the sign. Um, business owners always want to portray a certain image that they care more than the business owner next door. Um, when I see a well-painted sign, it has a certain warmth to it. I appreciate how much time and effort has been put into each letter, and it's a true art form. Yes, a quick, easy vinyl sign has its place, and done well will look just as good as a painted one. But in a day and age where everything is becoming so fast-paced and digital, how lovely that there are both still craftsmen who want to pursue a career using traditional methods, and also people who appreciate the craft enough to commission them. Craft is so important to continue in this day and age, where technologies are pushed upon the young. There is a value in craft, and it will always exist and will always continue to grow. I think that's it, Mel. <laughs> I've got a short video to play at the end. Uh, now, before 
taking any questions. Yeah. Should we take questions now or should I play this? This is made by a, a local video company uh, called uh, Fine Rolling Media. And they just did this little intro a few years back for me. Go to the fireflies. 